Yeah! What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Roleplaying Unlimited presents Sunday Night G4, The Coalescence Part 1, closing out, moving into our next chapter, Callus's Gift. I, of course, am your host, Tragically HP, coming to you live from the 100th Meridian, where the Great Plains begin. Happy you decided to join us this Sunday evening before you go back to work probably tomorrow. Hope you're all having a great night. Let's get into our game here. See just what is going on tonight. Wake up, everybody. Ah! There it is. Good evening. Hello, hello. 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 Oh, hi. hi. How do you do, there? Howdy, everybody. Good evening. And salutations. What's going on? I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, we nah, decided I... that the fairy is now Tinkerbell and nobody's calling him Tyrant. Well, uh... he's now my Peter Pan. He's and got he's going to be eaten. <laughs> We've got Peter we Pan break. and Tink Tinkerbell. We, we made him break and sync with the laugh there. <laughs> well, let's uh, jump right back into where we are. we got a few things uh, logistically we got to cover here before we get fully into it. But let's go back to the Deep King's Domain, or the Dread King. It was kind of an interchangeable term there but we finally killed that big motherfucker that nasty ass thing that was causing us all kinds of psychoses as we were traveling through its domain no more layer actions no more trippy illusory terrain it is dead um ellie is going to be taking a uh, hiatus from the uh, g2 and g4 groups for a while so we're gonna have her head on out of here for the time being um, uh, likewise, uh, our unnamed Warforged uh, is out tonight on, uh, I think, a date. So uh, you go ahead, have fun there, buddy. We will catch you next time around. Otherwise, our existing party uh, looks to be intact. Pix, Aramel, Delcy, Oracle, and Niles. These are all our enhanced versions. Still in the field of play. There is a large pile of treasure with a vibrating, glowing longsword sticking out of it right here where Pix is. And likewise, just a bit to the south, an intact and humming ominously sphere of annihilation. So uh, what's our group thinking about with, uh, with that? I'd like to check out that sword. I want the shinies. All right. And Niles is just going to sit on his perch there and watch as everything's going on. Yeah, you got a nice 35-foot view here of the entire room, and that is a large pile of treasure there. Some of the coins were getting scattered around in the most recent conflict here. But what we do find... Oh, goodness, yeah, we're going to need to spend a considerable amount of time going through this and then putting it into our special repository that can come with us uh, when we make the transition back to our uh, default personas, typically what we find in the Enhanced Realm. It's uh, not easily brought back with us, but I think this is definitely worth snagging up and adding into our inventory. That's a shitload of copper coins, though. <laughs> and as far as the glowing sword is concerned, uh, the first person to check it out feels a, an intense emotion of glee emanating from the weapon, uh, our first indication that this is a sentient weapon. And its glee seems to be centered around the fact that your group killed the Dread King. Can we inspect it and see if it knows, like if it has a name or anything on it? Roll Arcana. Give me five seconds. 
sure. These are B sheets, right? Correct. Yeah, we're going to be moving back to our original sheets shortly after we put uh, the finishing touches on this dungeon here. And then meet our new character as well, waiting in the wings. And of course, anybody who wishes to roll that Arcana check is welcome to try so. Even with a negative one. I'm gonna, Arcana, I'm I'm not gonna roll my guidance though. All right, look at that. Everybody's got a minus one on their Arcana. 18. Rosie ended up with a zero. <laughs> Rosie's smirk. Listen, we don't talk about it. Womp womp. Some 17s and 18 to top it off. All righty. So while the weapon is incapable of speech, it would seem, it seems to uh, convey uh, empathically its emotions rather than directly conveying speech. Those of you who uh, did not roll a zero on your check, sorry to say, <laughs> are able to identify a word that appears into your mind, a word known as akafelos. That would appear to be the name of this magical longsword. Delcy wants to touch it. It has a warm, magical sensation to it. Definitely a powerful weapon. And through its empathic uh, conveyance, it seems to impart to you that its special purpose is to destroy aberrations. Much like the Dread King. And you said it was stuck in the stone? It's uh, just sticking out of the pile of coins. Well, Delcy's going to look at everybody. I just going to say, Well, if it's all right with everybody, I'm going to take the sword. You're going to what? I'm going to take the sword. That's fine. I just want the gold. I just want the gold. Well, you, we can split the gold, but you can have the sword. Quick question for you there, Dan. Yo. With my character being able to hop in such things as that, uh, would it be reasonable to assume that he can uh, gingerly do like a little spring off of this and land down on the ground safely. Definitely. Alrighty. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, While they're all infatuated with the gold and whatnot, uh, I'd like to check out this uh, beastie's body and see if I can find out any more information or if there's anything useful about it. Alrighty. We'll check on that in just a moment. Um... Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so the uh, arrow of slain that is mentioned in that text there above is an arrow of dragon slain.
Yeah, an 11 on this is not uh, giving us much information at all, aside from uh, somewhat of the obvious. This thing has a hard chitinous exterior that if you were able to successfully pry it off without damaging it, it could possibly be fashioned into a suit of armor or a shield at some point. I'm going to grow some people out here. Uh... Because Niles is on the smaller side, is there any way that now that this thing is dead and its muscle tissue isn't holding the chitinous material together, would he be able to dig his way into the body and see if he can learn more about it? That's a uh, another nature check. All right, we'll do that. Hey, uh, Oracle, you want to help me uh, hold these plates apart so I can slip in? Yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, Delcy's just gonna hang out with Rosie. Well, that's at least better. Yeah, we're just gonna stay over here and, you know, play in the pile of gold. Not too bad. Hope I'm losing functions here. There we go. Windows vanishing and all shit. Okie dokie. So, given the powerful nature of this creature, its uh, tissues and blood might possibly be able to be fashioned in such an alchemical way to uh, create some interesting concoctions, if uh, such is anything our group is uh, proficient in or interested in. Well then. In that case, I'm going to use my uh, my string and my pouch and a couple other little things inside my inventory here to uh, collect what materials I can from this uh, critter. And uh, I'll hang on to them, see if anybody's got any use for them. That's another nature check. See just how precise we can be removing anything of necessity on this thing. Wow. Does it still count for Oracle help? Do have a help, so that is quite useful there. Yay. Thanks for the cheers, friends. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty. So, I would write uh, Deep King's Remains somewhere on your sheet. And I guess, yeah, at a, a later point, we might be able to do something with them. Keep in mind, these are perishable, so they're not going to uh, remain forever in a uh, form of potentable extraction, if that's even a term. <laughs> I climb out and I kind of look around and I go, well, my fur wasn't always teal, y'all. Uh, anybody got something to help keep these a little on the nicer side? On the what side? The nicer side, you know. Uh, kept a little little on the, on the fresher side. <laughs> I just stare at him in confusion. 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 Did anybody bring their mini fridge? Just stay away from the shinies looking like that. Well, now you don't worry about that too much, little fella. There, like it's, it's just a little bit of squishies. Can I uh, swing my lightsaber in a very fast circle and see if that can uh, blow the gunk off of him? Um, do you have that power? No, that wasn't a power. That was just me coming up with something. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, if anything, his life might flash before his eyes. <laughs> I don't know if you had like a force cleanse or something. All right, well, we have another uh, bit of uh, logistics to take care of here. Uh, let's see. I believe it would be in our order of login. It would be Rosie and then DJ. So we're going to knock these out one at a time. Our what did I do? Deck of many fortunate things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will say that I'm proficient in herbalism, so I did throw a uh, 
survival of 14 to offer any knowledge about uh, keeping things fresh for longer periods of time in a survival kind of way. Sure. Probably can do better, dude. <laughs> well, I think the uh, the knowledge is there, but the ability is perhaps lacking. So Aramil may be able to like tell us, yeah, this is a good idea, and this is a good idea, but most of them require things that our group doesn't seem to have. I'm not going to assume we don't have it because it's a big group and you guys have a lot of stuff. But offhand, I'm not seeing anybody be like, yeah, I've got this uh, this thing I can put it in, or this portable hole, or etc. In any case, uh, Rosie, above your name, in the roll 20, you should see a little card now. Go ahead, click that, and you should be able to drag it onto the tabletop for all of us to see just what you ended up with. I cannot drag it. Do you have the names on the top of your screen or on the bottom of your screen? The top. Should I move them to the bottom? It's easier to move them down and do it. That's how we did it earlier. No worries. I'm just going to try to steal the card from you. It might be a quicker process. So let me steal it and then I'll drag it to the table. And it is... Oh, shit. It's the fates. Looks like I've got a little too much animation going on here. Everything is frozen. All right, the fates coming up. I encourage you to make a note about that somewhere on your character sheet as it is an intangible reward and possibly easily forgotten. So the fates now belongs to Pix. I'm going to put that card back in the deck. Recall. A little shuffly shuffly. And we'll deal a card over to DJ. As long as no one picks Knight again, we're good. <laughs> Here's open. Uh, DJ, same thing for you. You should see the card above your name there. Um. On the Roll20 interface, assuming that the names are not on the top of the screen. If they are, then I'll just try to steal that card from you. Your card. All right, a gimme, gimme. You should have a notice that says I'm trying to steal it. Just click, let it go. Oh, what the heck? It looks like John ended up with it somehow. Uh, it's Jim. Give me that card. Alrighty. Well, shit. We're making it rain then, huh? So there is our Jim. Truly, truly outrageous. 25 pieces of jewelry worth 2,000 gold pieces each appear at your feet. So DJ is now 50,000 gold pieces richer. Hey, Rosie, how jealous are you? He's going to start swatting Rosie away because Rosie won't. Literally, literally going to be trying hard, to climb. So. Yeah, I'm going to try to climb Rosie. Okay. All right, so we're shuffling that up. And just a reminder, the Deck of Fortunate Things is open to any of you who wish to leave a review on our Facebook page by December 31st. Uh, as for now, we will put the deck away. 
think that covers everybody tonight who has not already drawn. Yo, Valtheris, what's happening, dude? Good to see you, man. How's everything? All right, so we have our treasure in hand. Uh, thousands and thousands of different coins. And we also have our new magic items. We have some remains of this carcass. What are we thinking about the sphere down here? Anybody want to try an arcana I, like, check do, on that? Yeah, can I do an arcana? Yes, sir. I'll, I'll help. I'll give him support. Okay. Can I also do an arcana? Sure. Oh, damn. And he had help, too. Well, okie dokie. Let's have ourselves a look see. The Sphere of Annie. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, legendary magical item. a hole in the multiverse hovering in space and stabilized by a magical field surrounding it it obliterates all matter it passes through and all matter that passes through it unless an artifact is susceptible to damage from a sphere of annihilation it passes through the sphere unscathed anything else that touches the sphere but isn't wholly engulfed and obliterated by it takes four die 10 force damage each time it does so the sphere is stationary until someone controls it. If you are within 60 feet, you can use an action to make a DC 25 Arcana check. On a success, the sphere levitates in one direction of your choice. On a failure, it moves 10 feet towards you. A creature whose space the sphere enters must make a dexterity saving throw or possibly take that force damage. Uh, if you attempt to control it that's under another creature's control, we experienced that last game when the Cave Sovereign was controlling the sphere, and our Warforged attempted to take control of the sphere. So that's a, that's a pretty telling artifact right there, and uh, you may not want to stand so close to it, because, uh, yeah, you have a brief sensation of just not existing anymore. So I shouldn't try and control it with everyone right there, huh? <laughs> and they so all run away. <laughs> so I can't put it in my pocket, is what you're saying. Correct. I mean, you can always try. You can, you can try anything once. Anyone Listen, have I... a holding they never told anybody about? Listen, if y'all got a bag of holding, we're also putting some of these guts in there, too. Nobody wants your guts in their bag of holding. You be quiet there, little feller. Delphi agrees that she does not want your guts in the bag of holding. If it existed. Is that sword an artifact? It is an artifact. Can we cut the Fear of Annihilation in half? Uh, we cannot. Best thing we can hope for is that the artifact will not be destroyed by the sphere. The sphere is seemingly indestructible. I vote not to try to break the sphere. Me too. I well, feel like, like Pig okay. should go over there and give it a little poke. We got like a communication device or what? What what are we gonna do about this? We killed the thing, now there's a spear. How do we how do we go home? Let's go back to the ship. Let's take the gold and go back to the ship. So we're ignoring the spear? Yep. I mean in theory there's nobody left to control it. Yeah, but what if a big baddie comes through here and just this orbs just sitting here? It's we not have explosives, we can bury the cave. 
I'm all ears. Uh, if uh, anybody's got some explosives, we could close off them entrances. All I got is this gear lightsaber. Does it cut through pillars? It cuts whatever through whatever the DM lets it cut through. If I rage and run at a pillar, would that work? Um, possibly, but you may not uh, be able to extricate yourself in time from the ceiling crashing down on you. That's true. Smart, and with the conversation of uh, collapsing the cave, my, Niles is just going to kind of yeet himself up here. <laughs> Woo! Takes a seat is and it... says, well, now y'all y'all let me know when you figure out what you're going to be doing here. I'll just... uh." Hang out at a safe distance. Yep, when you also, are ready for pickup. The plan. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was talking to Niles. Oh, you're not going to help us come up with the plan? Oh, I can think just fine from up here. If anything, the perspective gives me a better vantage. Well, let's hear it, old great savior. Well... I mean, I already said my idea. That's the fact that there ain't anybody else around here. We could probably just go. My job was to come get y'all. And I got y'all. So we should probably go. Can I look right. around to see if there's a weak pillar? Sure. Perception. Most of these entrances are only about five feet wide. I could use mold earth and see if I could close them up on our way out behind us. Never mind. If someone can make a boulder, I have a spell that lets me throw a boulder. Can I, uh, cut one of the pillars with my lightsaber to create a boulder? If you cut the pillar, won't the entire thing collapse? I don't know. Let's try and cut the pillar. Can we leave the cave first? <laughs> That's up to y'all right here. I'm just kind of watching and wishing I had some popcorn. As you guys are discussing this, Nile is very... Uh, oh, did not mean to do that. Sorry. Area. Um... What are we throwing a boulder at? How tall are these walkways? Uh, the walkways are 15 feet high. Alright. I was just gonna throw a boulder at the entrance. Uh, which one? North, northeast, or northwest? Well, it looks like somebody has mold or er mold earth, so they can close one. Well, it's fifteen feet high, so that's that's a little big. Also, uh, we, first let's decide which we're exiting. You think I can break this tunnel? Um, let's let's roll some group uh, perception checks here. Just a just a kind of a quick quick resolve of this right here. Well, that's fantastic. I'm just failing at this. I... Rosie, you need to just take a seat. God damn. <laughs> All right, so as we start putting our heads together to try to figure out a way with our existing capabilities to block or destroy this structure, uh, the only thing we come up with is that we do not have those capabilities in our group. The Cave Sovereign did not choose a, uh, a weak domain to live in. If anything, these walls and caves are very strong. And it would require a significant amount of uh, firepower, if not even uh, some type of orbital bombardment, to do the type of damage that we're, we're suggesting. Is 
So y'all want to go back to the ship then? Let's go back to the ship. Wait, grab the gold, then go back to the ship. Grab all of our loot, and then go back. See, Delcy's on the same page as me. Oh, that's because Delcy wants the shiny sword. <laughs> Delcy and Pix love the shinies. All right, so we have our treasures. We activate our beacon, and we are heading... Oh, one moment. Hold right there, Oracle. As you have found... Oh, God. You something on your own. Yeah. Why would you... Listen, I, the map I wanted to explore, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, leave it to a Jedi to ruin a well-laid plan. Did just do? Where did he even go? <laughs> Where did you go? Oh, well, he yeah. eated himself into death. <laughs> Yeah, we do still have some monsters over there that we did not clear out. And cool. he found them! We are not the Jedi you are looking for. Okay, let's just Someone check. Someone come save me! Check, check, we check. were almost in the clearing! Ah. Listen, I don't know what's going on, okay? So yeah, you wander yourself into a heavily fungonated ca uh, cavern here. There's lots of mushrooms and lots of mounds of fungus all over the place. And no sooner do you stumble in than four of those mounds make their presence known right on top of you. So I'm going to get a Good quick job. initiative roll here. <laughs> well, look at that. Oh, how about that? That doesn't go there. That goes there. And, oh, look at that. We've got our group two initiative mixed in here now. Womp womp. Let's delete all of that. Yeesh, yeesh. Oh, and of course they beat you out by two. Do you have anything for your initiative that gives you advantage or something? Um, I might. Give me a second. They got an 18, you got a 17. Nope, I see nothing. Well, shit. All right, well, two of them have you flanked just from your starting position and the way they stand up. So four attacks coming your way, all of them with flank advantage. Ooh. Oops, they're not rolling damage. Uh, I'm guessing the 23s have a good shot. The rest of them probably not so much. Correct. So let's just do that again. Ignore the attack rolls here. Even if I roll a crit, we're just looking for damage. So 17 bludgeoning, 15 bludgeoning. If All right, I'm going to um, use Circle of Shelter, which allows me to roll a D8 and add the number rolled to my AC. Okay. Nice. Well, that's handy. They would not hit. All right. And uh, that will send the other two scrambling up to you. Which I guess they will try the same thing, uh, just with no advantage. Natural 20 will hit regardless. 25 bludgeoning coming your way. Even your tightest, most formidable defense giving you almost an armor class at 30. Guy came right through and did... Psh, sorry! 25 damage.
All right, it still had 12 temp HP from last session, so it brought me down to 84. Okay. Well, you got four of these things in front of you. What's your play? Uh, first, I'm going to sling my um, saber at one of them just to see how much damage it does. Okay. Well, that's a hit. Yeah, it looks like okay, it can stand up to a, a whole good, lot. Yeah, could probably <laughs> stand up to a good amount of those. Yeah, I'm going to uh, do that again, but with <laughs> um, four, the last four of my force empowered strikes. All right. That's another hit. Okie doke. Well, that didn't do much. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bonus action um, go into my um, Sarisu form, which um, has uh, damage. Okay. Anything else? Um, I'm going to try to um, move backwards 30 feet while um, taking the, uh, uh, the reaction hit or whatever. Oh yeah, all four of them got a shot on you here. One, two, three, four. How long does your, uh... One round. One round, or start of your next turn, end of your next turn? Uh, because I used it before my turn, it's already over. Gotcha. So it looks like one of them smacked you with a 23. Otherwise, a bunch of misses. Each and every one of you has a beacon that can uh, bring you back to the ship. It's how your characters can teleport away and reappear when needed. So, I have a question. Do we know that he... Do we know where he is? You have no clue where he is. Okay, so... I, I think that we'd assume that he was on the ship, right? Probably if we all have that's, our own beacons. That, that's up to you. Okay, I'm going to beacon up to the ship. Alrighty. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I didn't notice him leave, so... Sorry, bro. I noticed when Daniel pointed it out, so I think I'd assume that he was on the ship already. Alright. Not uh, to abandon you, man, but yikes. Aramel, same thing. Um, yeah, if they're leaving, I'm leaving because I'm behind them, so I know less. Alrighty. Well, we'll get rid I'm of doing that. so good. <laughs> Bro, I don't, I don't even know what to say, man. I'm sorry. He'll be fine. He's the Jedi Master. So here they come, stepping on up. Of course, you got them in a bit of a bottleneck now, so at least they can't converge completely on you. And... Bop! All right, another... Could have been a natural 20, but it wasn't. So, your turn. All right, can I um, do the dash action, um, move 60 feet, and then use my free action to... Uh, teleport out of here with my beacon. Hell yeah. Oh, he's totally going to yell at us. Okay, I do that. It's on the, on the ship. All right. There we go. So let's get you out of here. Whoop. And now we have a, a too strong stark 
dark map here, and we are all back aboard Callus's Crippler here, our steampunk airship interstellar vessel here. I believe one, two, yeah, Ellie is not here. Unnamed Warforge is just kind of chilling out up in the corner here. He should be back next session. Otherwise, uh, all of our characters should be present here on the map, including our new arrival, Tyrant the Large. So now that you're all back on board the ship, I will give you a few moments to uh, hash out any RP that you wish to do, uh, introduce yourselves to the new character, and vice versa. Just for a bit of lore, if uh, you've not already been told their Tyrant, the organization we work for is called Ubiquity. They are a collection of clerics and priests of a variety of different religions, most of whom usually would not work together. Their entire goal seems to be to prevent an extragalactic undead outbreak. And in that respect, they have hired your characters who have done a variety of missions for them. They themselves stepped in to aid you when this group was uh, accosted by Zastam. And at this point, uh, we are now back on the ship that houses all of us. Daniel, Delcy's missing from the thing. Gotcha. If uh, You should be able to just drag drop your characters onto the board, if I have not already done that. Oh, and look at that. There's no character token linked with it. That's handy. Okay. Uh, you're here uh, disembodied until such other time as I fix this. Pixie's just over. gonna... <clears throat> run up to Delcy and attack her with a hug and be like, we survived! While that's happening. <laughs> uh, I knock on Oracle's door and I'm like, Oracle, please tell me you're in there, sir. Hello? Hello? Did you, uh, did you abandon us down there and come back to the ship by yourself there, sir? No, I went down a uh, cavern and um, got uh, ambushed by a bunch of weed tangly men, and then I ran away. My goodness. Well, I'm glad to see you back, my friend. We all thought you came back to the ship, so we uh, came back ourselves. No, I was, I was hurting, um, but I think I'm okay now. Well, I'm glad to see you doing all right there, friend. Did you... Uh happen to snag anything of interest while you were down there? No, I ran away. I, I got hurt. I ran. Must have been something quite impressive to make a man like yourself run. Like I said, I got ambushed. There was four of them. Well, now that's just ungentlemanly. It was 16 tons of unclipped Maui Waui. <laughs> and it was pissed. Man, that sounds like something you'd be smoking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we go back, we could probably grab some, make some um, sushi rolls. It wanted to be smoked, but uh, well. only the Dread King possessed the potential to roll such a shambling mound into a suitable a joint. Dread King. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, sir, why don't you and I go and get ourselves a cup of something? Because I think you deserve it. Lead the way. I don't know where I am. Okay, Pix is gonna scream out to um, everybody on the ship. Guys, guys, there's an intruder. There's a creepy fairy. Come, guys, guys, guys. Those <laughs> oh, are already by Pix. Yeah, Delcy's already down here with me. Would 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 myself and Oracle hear that? Cause like we're on the other side of the ship. Well, yeah, it's a very small ship. I mean, everything okay. kind of echoes. She's also screaming bloody murder. <laughs> she is like, 
freaking out over this tiny fairy. <laughs> oh. Hello there, sir. Who might you be? Who is this? Who are you? Uh, hello, I'm, I'm Tyrant the Large. Large? Oh, you're such a little thing. I am not little! Is that your porn name? My porn name? You're quite small. Listen, ignore him. What are you doing here? Who are you? Are you trying to hurt us? What have you stolen? I, I was hired to be here. Ex exactly. Hired by whom? I forgot the name. Oh, oh. I'm going to once over to see if he has the symbol on him. Uh, he does have the badge of the uh, of ubiquity. Ah, beautiful. You wanna you wanna join us in a drink? I love a nice ale. We don't know him. Well, now, why don't y'all give the poor feller some space? He looks like he's new here, and you guys are making him uncomfortable. He could fit in the pipes. I move up closer. You want to get that drink? I, uh, <laughs> yeah, and Tyrant flies and lands on your head. Nice. Uh, well, I, have, I have several horns, so you're riding on my horns. Well, before Tyreek gets too far into this, I want him to have uh, what may be perhaps one of the most memorable opening five minutes of a character's career. Uh, this definitely applies to all of your characters. Uh, are all of you updated to level five? I know we had a few of you that were uh, a little bit behind, but is everybody at level five now? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Because now it's time for level six. And that includes our new arrival as well. Uh, everybody Ooh. benefits from that XP. If you change the experience points on your uh, XP bar to 14,000, that will cause that red anvil to pulse, indicating time for level up. You may uh, do this right now immediately. You can do it pretty much at any point over like the next 45 to an hour because we've got some role play. We've got exposition to set up our next plot. So uh, it's not urgent, but uh, definitely get on that at some point over the next hour. Level six. And with the, uh, the hit points, you, of course, can take the high average if you choose to roll, and you roll a 1, you can re-roll that, but whatever you roll the second time, you are stuck with. If you roll a 2, that's pretty much about the worst thing you can roll, unfortunately. Correct. Yeah, some of you may have been part of a, uh, a hype train or something uh, earlier in the week that also granted a bonus level. Of course, uh, you would be one level higher and then plus this level here. Or you might just be an old man. I have a question. Fire away? Dano. Uh, my enhanced character, uh, I went with an Echo Knight martial arch archetype. Um, am I able to kind of retcon that a little bit in the fact that I now have that magic item from your wife uh, turning in all those Beskar points? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever you have for your enhanced does not necessarily have to be what you build towards. It's just a a potential future version of yourself that you use for these missions. Gotcha. 
I also have a question. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, um, is, so our characters in, like, the, um, when they first get on the ship, is this, like, right after their, um, like, their story stops in their, um, character stories? Uh, it could be. It could be, uh, some time has passed by. That's kind of, uh, up to each individual player, I would say. Okay. I, I was just checking, because Pix is a little... yeah. Oh yeah, I know you got a, uh, pretty significant, uh, backstory quest going on as well. Did you like my love letter? I loved it. <laughs> I was obsessed. <laughs> Very nicely played. So yeah, any uh, further RP between uh, your characters? Even if not, let's go through the rotation of just uh, general character introductions. And uh, getting to know each other, I will go in the order I have it here on my stream. So, John, why don't you tell us a bit about Oracle, please? Well, he's a, um, a Jedi. Um, wow, I'm doing real good. Um, he's a Zabrak Jedi. Um, he stands... Um, pretty tall about um in the six foot area he's got um horns on his um head probably like six to um eight horns um scattered around the top of his head he's got no hair um he's got uh an orange um orange skin tone um with some um uh, brown slash black you know it's darkening um I guess you could say tattoos, but it's more of his skin design. Um, he welds a very large um, uh, Claymore saber, uh, so a very large lightsaber. Um, yeah, that's that's Oracle. I mean, I hate to break it to you, bro, but uh, if your guy is bald, I'd say there's an 86% chance that he's going to turn to the dark side. It's just, it's how they do us, man. I, as a bald man myself, I find myself extremely represented improperly in a lot of movies. I'm always evil. It's just what they do. Blame Darth like Windu. <laughs> right? Yeah, even Windu flirted with the dark side, that vape pad style of seven right there. And then people always like to throw Professor Xavier and Jason Statham and The Rock. And I'm like, yes, you have three very solid choices there. Now, please allow me to go down the litany, starting with Blofeld to Kingpin to... <laughs> yeah, let's just keep going. All right, Even so... Dark Vader. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when he was good, he had hair. As soon as he lost his hair, he turned evil. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. Over to Niles. Tell us a bit about yourself, if you would, please. So, Niles comes across a little bit as like a southern gentleman, so to speak. Um, he's about six feet tall, covered in teal fur. Uh, he's not really bulky, but he is uh, like a sinewy, muscular kind of stance. Um, and some people know him as the gentleman bounty hunter. Very civilized. And Rosie, up next, tell us a bit about Pix, if you would. Of course. So Pix is a two-foot-nothing goblin. Um, she was born blind, as everybody knows, and uh, she made a deal with a demon lord who granted her vision for making an orc fall in love with her. Um, she fell in love with the orc. The demon then took the orc to the... Um, reigns of hell where she the demon is torturing the orc and uh Pix can't really sleep because she can see everything that's happening very cool did we lose john what's up i guess we just lost you from roll 20 or my feed is showing up weird it could be either or all right, so that is picks up next. We have Aramel, G2, and G4, who, uh, yeah, I think you should be the highest level character in this group at this point. 
Yeah, so kind of by default, uh, like one of those TV shows that doesn't have all the original characters, there's that one guy that's still there in <laughs> season seven with all the new people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so basically, I'm a water tenacity, and normally I'm supposed to sound pretty much like this, but it's kind of mutated into a very uh, northeastern New Jersey kind of thing. Um, so, um, other than and that, it's because I was uh, basically raised by druid, uh, sorry, raised by dwarves, mining dwarves, and then uh, educated by a druid. And uh, one day, walking through the forest, it was a bright light and found myself in other worlds, and I've been in other worlds ever since. Um, and I think that um, being mostly a druid, though, recently I am uh, joining this, there is a kind of a small religious aspect, like a spiritual level, which uh, basically will kind of just basically ends up with me kind of taking a monk level later on in life. But, but you can still see it now in that uh, very scholarly, spiritual kind of way. And um, what's really funny is, for the most part, not so much now, but my party's been filled with animals. So I've always felt at home. <laughs> uh, because until recently, there's been almost like 90% animal creatures as party members. Something is not linking up with your character sheet here, because I see 28 hit points, and I know that cannot possibly be correct. Your character uh, sheet shows no differently. differently. So, there it is. Perfect. So yeah, once you get your long rest button clicked, your hit points should max out. Look a lot more respectable. Sarah, tell us a bit about Delcy, if you would. So, Delcy is a sort of not middle-aged, but like not young either. Uh, she's a middle-aged with steady cat folk. Um, she has been a pirate most of her life, so she has a sense of loyalty to her various party members. Um, she's got black fur, and uh, she does not drink. She adamantly refuses to drink due to her past, but she takes kindly to new members of the party and also likes new things. Sweet. And last but not least, our newcomer. Tell us a bit about your character, please. Standing at an exactly two inches and five centimeters, we have this broad type uh, fairy. Um, now, uh, Tyrant isn't, I would say he was more of a biblically accurate fairy. Very atrocious, very deadly, very violent. Uh, he wasn't formed in the belief of people he was formed by deities to actually try to take over the world. Uh, fortunately, he found himself into a situation where he's around good people all the time, but that usually changes with the little whispers in their ear. Um, the only difference is instead of uh, having the arctic glow of a normal fairy of a good bright color his color seems a lot more darker than other ones more of a dark side field and uh being a cleric of the grave domain he tends to go towards the undead more than anything he feels closer than Well, fantastic, friends. That is our character introductions right there. Of course, any uh, additional RP you wish to do, we can certainly get to. Otherwise, uh, level ups notwithstanding. We do have another mission to get to. And that will bring us back to our three remaining members of the Ubiquity leadership, Toten, Magramar, and Vergash. Once you have uh, rested up, 
suitably they call you to join them if you would please Delcy's just gonna drag Pix with her. <laughs> so no drinks? Well, uh, I'm I'm assuming after drinks. Like once you guys have all gotten settled in, got your level up, so uh, kicked your shoes off for a while, then then they call you in. Of course, if there's Anytime any uh, RP. These kinds of people, Niles always kind of hangs back a little bit. Doesn't like the hierarchy. I definitely uh, land on Niles. <laughs> well, hello there, little feller. Hey, you mind if I just nuzzle in your ear real fast? We, uh, uh, nothing. For the first time, he seems like he's lost his words and he kind of corrects himself and he goes, you still need to understand that the ears of our kind are not to be nuzzled. Uh, I am very aware with your kind. Uh, I, I nuzzled quite a bit of ears in my time. Um, I just feel very comfortable, you know, hanging off of the edges. You can sit on my shoulder there, young feller. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> So Pix is just gonna be standing behind Delcy, just looking at this in like complete shock on her face. Just like she can't believe that this is actually occurring. You never seen a fairy before? You're creepy. I'm gonna walk by, not make eye contact with a drink in my hand, and just kinda holler out, Excuse me, miss, is this mosquito bothering you? And then keep walking. <laughs> Mosquito? Delcy's gonna look at the, the fairy and say, Don't talk to the little one. She does not like you. Now, now, I think y'all need to calm down a little bit here. We're getting a little too carried away with ourselves. He's a newcomer. We still gotta give him some form of courtesy. He radiates the darkness. Well, that's fine there. You do too. I feel very neglected in this situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for standing up for me. With one finger, he very cautiously taps you on the head gently. My neck! Ow! I said gently, damn it. Ow! It broke my damn neck, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you much <laughs> more. <laughs> Listen, at least it wasn't that kitty cat over there giving you a little thought. Not very fond of cats. Don't talk to Delcy like that. Now you hush up, little one. <laughs> I bite. I know. Definitely does bite. Don't touch that theory. I laugh at John and I say, it stinks of Jedi. <laughs> John looks around real quick. Who said that? Now, now, I think we need to go back to what we were originally talking about. Who's got those drinks? Fairy drank all the drinks. I highly doubt someone of that uh, stature could put away I, that. I walk by with two more drinks. <laughs> Saying you can are, are these barrels right here? Are there drinks in here? Uh, it is not. <laughs> there are barrels uh, of food in here, but uh, the alcohol is not stored in here. It comes from the uh, the auto chef, which is located... Uh, where did we have that? Oh, it's uh, where uh, Unnamed Warforge previously was, the northeast side of the ship over here. This is your quote-unquote kitchen. Or Cole goes there for beer. All right. I thought we came over here to talk to the bosses. As the Oracle beer first, just simply bosses say, later. Well, now be a gentleman and grab me one too, there, friend. Yeah. Me as well. A little chill time, of course. You guys have earned it. We can uh, certainly wait to see what our employers have to say on the other side of that. 
or we can uh, split up. All right, so I'm carrying like what six beers? Well, at least three for me, sir. Did you say at least three for you? Yes, sir. All right, I'm carrying twelve beers. Can I use the force and levitate them? I was gonna ask. You can, but you just have this sensation of the force ghost of Yoda glimmering down on you with disapproval. <laughs> not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> oh, sorry. Here, let me do it right. Mad. I'm I am a dark not side point disappointed. For this. I am. For this, the force is not. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna float these beers back to the rest of the party. <laughs> Bitchin'. Hello, I come with beers. Marvelous, my friend. Marvelous. Uh, I'll take three, thank you very much. I'm glad you're holding one for me. Corellian Crimson. Very nice. Delicious. There was, there was one for you. Yeah, definitely one for you. You know how gnats get into people's drinks? Well, that's just Give disappointing on so many off. levels. I immediately cover my drink after hearing that. Man. <laughs> I landed Niall's drink. Like in Willow when the brownie falls into the keg. Mm, beer! <laughs> <laughs> You got me on that one. <laughs> you are drunk, and you forget when you are drunk, I am in charge. Well, which way do we go? That way! All right, I'm going to chug two beers and then ask if we're going to play a card game. Well, now that gets interesting. As I take a big gulp of my first drink. I'm only I, I'm only good at spades, so why are the cards back on the screen? Well these are the actual playing cards, your traditional 52 card deck if uh, we in fact do want to play cards roll 20 gives us a pre-built deck for which we can do so really awesome yeah, yeah. i want to do that i just want to do it to see what it does well yeah me too i just want to play because i want to <laughs> i think you can click on it there should be a deal option you can deal however many cards to yourself or I can deal uh, however many cards to the table, however we want to keep that. Uh, who's playing? And what are we playing? We playing blackjack? We playing uh, poker? What are we doing? Rummy? Ooh, blackjack. Are you rummy? I feel like we should be playing there, something rummy. of a, a gentleman's game. Something along the lines of uh, blackjack right. or five yes, card. Sir. I do know those the best anyway, so... I'm just gonna throw five cards each of your ways here. Oh, looks like look at that. We got cards all over the the map here. Let's get those. Bullshit. Let's get those Aaron. back in I'm here. my hand. Oh. Aaron. Yeah, you don't want everybody to see that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna shuffle these cards up, and then I'm gonna deal each of you five, uh, except for myself. Oh shit! I gotta be. Wait, careful what are we here. playing? Uh, we're playing blackjack or uh, poker. Five card or two card? All right, who, what are we voting for? Oh, I, I don't care either way. I'll do either one. I'm just going to fake it to life hit. Okay, let's play 21. No, no. <laughs> two cards? All right, blackjack yeah. it is. All right, give me just a moment here. Two cards come in to four of you. Five. Oh, 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 and six. 
Okay, so dealing two cards to each of you. Pow! So now above your names there, you should see the two cards that you have in your hand. <laughs> if we click on them, does it show for everyone else? I don't think it does. No. So I think what I'm, we want to do... I'm clicking everyone's cards and I can't see them. Yeah, I think what we want to do is have uh, those cards uh, showing, right? Or have uh, one of two showing? I think so, yeah. One of yeah, two. Yeah, generally you want one of two showing. Yeah, let's go... Let's do this real quick. Um, let's get you all over to a blank map here and let's... Darken that up so it doesn't blind all of us too horribly. There we go. Okay, so everybody choose a uh, section of the board that you want for yourself and just go ahead and drop your cards right there. Or card, I should say. Oops, not sure why that's there. There. I'll take that. Yeah, if you click the deck, you should be able to draw a card. You just have to drag it off of there and move it over to your section of the board. So what is each card worth in this? Face value, except for Jack, Queen, King, those are tens, and then the ace is either eleven or one. Correct. Okay, got it. Alright, so we're still missing a few people who haven't put down one card. Is everybody not playing? That's also, of course, uh, totally fair. I've got mine. I'm staying. All right, who's who? I'm eight. I got the diamond seven. I'm the jack of spades. I have the two. Okay, one moment. I have the two and the six at the top of the map. All right, I'm going to put some name tags here so we all can kind of see who's who and where's who. Uh, who's got the jack? Me. Okay. So that's Sarah. Who's got the uh, the eight? Me. Let's see. I want to commend Daniel for his ability to tell our voices apart. <laughs> pretty Facts. proud of myself. It is pretty impressive. Who's got the nine? Me, I got it. DJ. All right. And then the seven up here. Me. Let's see. Can I just say, just watching a fairy play cards is probably the hardest thing for a fairy to do. <laughs> He's also playing the cards in Niall's drink, so. And oh. my process it's of elimination, that would be John T right there. Easy. Okay, so let's just go uh, around the table from John T. Since he already uh, he already hit and grabbed an extra card, he said he's going to stay from there. Uh, Rosie, what are you thinking? One card in hand, one on the table. You want a new card to add to it, or are you staying where you're at? Do I put it on the table next to the other card? You do. Okay, I'm good. All right, 17 showing over to DJ. 
Can you look real quick and see if you see a card on another layer? What you talking about, Willis? See if you see a, another card. Because I had a different card than this when we first started. Yeah, yeah, click the cards above your name. There's two in your hand. Oh. I'll take that card then, if that doesn't belong. I'm clicking them, but it's not making them come up. So you click the ones in your hand and you drag one onto the screen and then just move it on top of your name. Yeah, those cards aren't doing anything. Well, shit. I guess if that's how it is, then uh, let's send it over to Tyrant. I'm definitely going to hit. All right. Should be able to just drag the card right off the deck there if you don't want to take it into your hand. There you go. Let me go. Sixteen, you stay in there or you uh go hit again? I'm staying. Alright. How about you, Sarah? Am I able to drag the card that's still in my hand to the table or no? That's that's your hidden card. That's kind of your ace in the hole. You don't want people to know what that is. Okay, then I'm gonna stay. Okay. Um, let's see, uh Wally, what you got? <laughs> That's the first I forgot to push the type this time. <laughs> well, I'm probably going to hit. Seven showing. Well. Stay in or uh, hit? Well, now here's the real question, ladies and gentlemen. Are we playing this under honor? Or are we playing this under the concept of uh, coin being the rule of all? With that said, Niles looks around the room and pulls a gold coin out of his pocket and plays with it in his hands. Are we making bets? I'll call the gold piece. Well, in that case, yes, I'm uh, going to place a bet for one gold piece. Oh, I'm poor. <laughs> Pix is going to put her love letter in the middle. Oh, damn. Pix is going for it. Wow. I suggest you hit, sir. I also like to live dangerously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with the bet, it uh, would imply that I'm staying, and it's uh, whoever's turn is next. Well, everybody has uh, has stayed where they're at here, so it's time to call. Everybody put your card down on the table, and let's see where we're at. Got a 20. What is that? 10, 17, 18, 16. Oh, Tyrant busted. 22. Wally is, what, 9? A mere 14. 14. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah wins. 11, 13, 19. Thanks. Yep. So Sarah cleans up. Sarah gets to add the equivalent of three gold pieces and a letter. Ah, oh, what's happening here? So, Delcy is going to give the letter back to Pix and say, No, this is yours. Stop clicking cards, everybody. Thank you, thank you very much. 
Double or nothing. All right, cards are shuffled in again. I'm going to deal two to each of you. Oracle's a gambler, immediately throws two gold pieces out. <laughs> well, now, sir, you need to pace yourself. It seems to be a problem. Trust me, I'm pacing myself. There we go. Two cards to each of you. Hopefully the uh, cards will work a little better for DJ this time. But yeah, go ahead. Drop one down. That's funny. Group three from this morning, their chapter was entitled The Illithid Casino. And we were expecting to play all kinds of gambling games, and they're still fighting these damn cactars on board the space station. Meanwhile, group four, <laughs> no gambling whatsoever planned, and the group's just like, yeah, let's play some cards. <laughs> Don't remind me of the nightmare of this morning, Daniel. <laughs> so you have a southern gentleman playing with you. I you think... are lucky that I don't have a six-shooter on the table. <laughs> DJ, did you click the deck? Yeah, it looks like yeah, DJ's looks like able DJ's to bring in. cards out from the deck. He just can't get them out of his hand. What? I got a nine on the table. Right, but you have two cards in your hand. You see your name on the board there above oh. that where there's the two pink cards? Yeah, those aren't doing anything. Yeah, that's, that's what we're saying. Like, you should be able to keep one of those hidden in your hand because that's the game we're playing here. Like... It doesn't do you any good if you can only play from the deck, but not from your hand. You can only see the one card. That's a damn shame. Is it, is it that you have, do you have the names on top? Like, is it you can't click on the cards, or? I can click them. They're not. This doesn't do anything. You can't click them. Can't drag them. Can we raise the bat? The bat go pieces. You can. You can absolutely raise it. I'm raising it. Well, who's uh who's hitting first here? Should we roll uh, dice to determine hit order, or do we just want to go with the same order as last time? Let's go with the order at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, that should yeah. be the same for everyone, right? That might be different for everybody. I'm not sure. I see myself, John, Wally, Rosie, DJ, Sarah, Tree. That's I'm right. too. All right. Solid. I guess if we're playing Vegas rules, though, we pass it over one with uh, each hand, so Wally would get first hit this time, since John got first last time. Yep, that's Gucci. In that case, uh, Miles takes a sip of his drink. He looks across to John and says, Well, sir, you decided to start us off a little on the strong side, so might as well follow suit. And he puts down another two gold pieces. Oh, woo woo. And I call. Uh, no, you raised two. He raised two and he's staying, huh? I'm staying, sorry. My apologies. All right, so over to Rosie. It's been so called to hire. I'm going to assume is standing on her chair. She's going to throw two more pieces and hit. All right. Drag it out Can't from the deck. you hit before you um, call? He says it's my turn. Uh, not just yet. Staying. All right. After Rosie, um, it would be uh, DJ here. Unfortunately, we can't see what he has in his hand. So uh, let's. Can go. you steal one of the cards in the chat? What's that? I folded last bet in the chat. Gotcha. Um, so Sarah would be next. Two gold pieces extra to stay in the game. You with us, Sarah? I am. I wasn't sure if you guys heard me. I thought I was going to fold. Oh, folding out. All right. So over to Tyrant. 
Can I raise it to in. ten gold pieces? Raise into ten. And I'ma stay. And stay in. So that's gonna go back over to Wally. Looks like it's six extra gold on your your part to stay in. Did John already get his turn? Oh, my bad. Full cycle back over to John. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna um uh, draw. Okay. Are you uh, paying the extra to stay in? <laughs> oh, I thought you could draw before you determine that. Uh, I think you got to pay and then you draw. All right, that's you, fine. Yeah, because if you bust, then nobody would ever pay. All right, so in total, we should have 12 gold pieces in there. 10. Well, well, if he called two and then he raised 10. Yeah, Tyrant, did you did you raise the total to 10 or did yeah. you add 10 to it? I add 10. So it's 14. Right. No, it's 12. We started with two. Oh, good point. Good point. We're at 14. Perfect. 12. 12, sorry. So, uh, hitting or staying there, buddy? I'm going to hit again. All right. Twelve showing. That's that. All righty. So, uh, we have call now. Everybody put your, uh, your other card down. Wait, don't they have to... Uh, or yeah, you got. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. You got to pay in to stay. To the, stay. Yeah. yeah. So. And I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna actually stay. All right. How about you, Rosie? I'm fucking staying. All right, and paying the uh, extra. Extra to stay in. Yep. And let's see. That's over yeah, to. Tell us it was pay to play. <laughs> <laughs> and over to Tyrant. Are we revealing? Are yep. we? Yep. Back over to you. Everybody has uh, has called, so you reveal first, and then everybody else thereafter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh. No wonder why you wanted to get right into it. Oh, oh John no. busted. We got two 21s there, though. Yeah, but Tyrant would win. <sighs> yeah, Tyrant's, Tyrant got his on the initial two and with fewer cards. Yes, sir. <laughs> Run my gold. I'm splitting with Niles. <laughs> Guess he's not as much of an idiot now, is he, Rosie? <laughs> he is an idiot. I stand by it. I split with Niles. <laughs> that's fine. He's my idiot now. He heard me giggling. That's that's the only reason he won. I had the I had the game in in the beginning. I just wanted to see how long y'all would go for it. <laughs> Truly evil. So how much uh, how much gold was that? He got twelve, 12 for three, five. Sixty gold. Yep. Plus the two, I mean if he put twelve of himself, technically doesn't count. Mm -hmm. So Niles only accepts twenty off of you there, Tyrant. That's good. That's good. You know you let me chill in the beer, so we're cool. So what are we thinking? Another round or uh I already took the money, I'm leaving. <laughs> I think I think Niles has finished his drinks now and he's ready to go and he's finally drunk enough to actually listen to the big wigs. Alright. Talk to the bosses. Well, let's put the deck away for another day. And
And let's see if I can get this working. Yes, indeed. Back to the Crippler. Here we go. Woo. Just in time for our halftime break here, friends. We will catch you in about 10 minutes or so. Are you with us? <laughs> what a lead up. <laughs> Bet. I'm going to go get some hot chalky. Who's getting hot chocolate? I want some. I want some too. Uh, you want to hear something wonderful? I'm going to do that now too. I'm, I'm going to get hot chocolate, but I'm also adding caramel macchiato to it. Okay, so what it sounds like is our entire group going to go drink hot chocolate real quick. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Um, mine's going to be best because I'm actually wearing brack pant coveralls. Suck it. I need coat coveralls hot chocolate now. Well, time to get some. We need proof that everyone did get hot chocolate. Yeah, we definitely need proof. Don't worry. I got you. I got you guys.
I'm back. Do you have hot cocoa? I do. I have to take the picture. I just got a text message from the guy who was going to be my landlord, so I got distracted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>